Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life and we are just coming off of actually a full week of sickness in our house. We have been surviving on scrambled eggs, cereal, and frozen pizza, and basically all of the juice that we could find any place. So now that I'm feeling better, I'm going to get back into the kitchen and do some cooking. I have about two pounds here of venison burger and one small onion. I salt and peppered this all. I'm just uh, browning up the meat here. I'm going to be making some tater tot casserole for supper tonight. And so that just sounded really good and comforting and so easy. I don't even have to use a recipe for it. I already drained two cans of mixed vegetables. I have one can of cream of chicken soup. I wish I had cream of mushroom, but I don't have any of that right now. And quite honestly, you know, I know you can make your own cream soup, but I just don't feel like doing that today. All right, now that everything is browned up nicely, I'm just gonna pour in uh, my vegetables and my cream soup. So you might notice that I'm just using my Dutch oven and that's because then that way, I don't even have to put this into another casserole dish, I can just put everything in here. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the tater tots on top and then, you know what? That's it. I can just pop the whole thing right into the oven just like this. Now that it's all stirred in nicely, I'm just going to kind of smooth it out here and then go and grab my tater tots and get this into the oven. Tater tots are on. I also like to put a little sprinkling of seasoned salt on top, so I did that. I'm just gonna wait for my oven to preheat. I'm gonna get this in the oven at 350 degrees, and it's basically just gonna bake until the guys come in. They're actually out cutting firewood right now, and so whenever they come in, probably somewhere between 5 and 5.30, then we will serve this up with a side salad. It's Tuesday night now and we're going to be having pepper steak for supper and so this is a recipe in my cookbook here and I'm just making it pretty much the way it says except my pack of venison is only one and three fourths pounds instead of two and a half pounds. I'm not sure why I didn't get out a second one to thaw but anyway I didn't but I do have everything ready to go. I have my meat sliced here. It is marinating in black pepper and soy sauce about five tablespoons soy sauce and a teaspoon of fresh ground pepper. I have an onion, a couple um, peppers here, and I do have green peppers from the garden frozen, so I'm just going to be running those over some water, or running water over those in just a minute. I also have my sauce prepared here. This is one brown gravy packet, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a cup of cold water, and two tablespoons of soy sauce, and I just have that whisked over here and ready to go because once you start cooking this, it does go pretty quickly. I have my great big cast iron with a little bit of oil here. I'm gonna get that heating in just a minute, but I have rice going over here. This is jasmine rice, and I just wanna wait until this comes to a boil. I should probably put the cover on that. It'll boil a whole lot faster, and then we will just kind of get going. This is one of those meals that it cooks up pretty quickly, so I usually do not film while I am cooking it. When the cast iron is really, really hot, I will add in the venison here and in like a single layer and I'll just quick fry it on both sides. It doesn't have to be a a hundred percent cooked but almost. As soon as it's the way I want it I will remove that to a clean um, pie plate or a clean plate something like that and then I will add a little bit more oil if necessary and I will put in all of my vegetables and I'll just stir fry the vegetables around for five to eight minutes. It really just depends on how soft you like those. In the last minute I will add in some minced garlic and once the vegetables are cooked I will give this one more whisk. I will pour in the sauce and then I'll also add the venison strips back. I will bring that to a quick boil it should thicken up very quickly and then turn off the heat. It is ready to serve. If you like it a little saucier, uh, you can double the sauce recipe.
Keep spinning. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. Okay, now spin backwards. I'm actually filming a like lunch video as well as filming a supper video this week. So I'm working on lunch, which happens to be BLTs. I don't know which video you guys will see first, but anyway, I have everything done for that. So what I'm gonna do next here is just put together tonight's supper, and that is going to be Amber's creamy potato soup. I normally use the cubed hash browns when I went, they were out, <laughs> so I ended up getting shredded. Um, I've never done this, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to work out just fine. And I also, a little um, tip also, is if you do not have like the cans of chicken broth that the recipe calls for, just use a couple of chicken bouillon cubes, like maybe three chicken bouillon cubes, or three teaspoons of the Nor chicken seasoning, something like that, and then 28 ounces of water, which is like three and a half cups of water. That's what I have. I have the water in here. I'm going to put a tablespoon of the Nor seasoning in. I'm also going to add in the cream of chicken soup. And then rather than take time right now to make, um, to chop up an onion, I'm just going to use some uh, dehydrated, the minced onion, and then we're gonna add pepper and put the cover on and call it good. So off camera, I did add in one eight ounce block of cream cheese. So I just cut that into eight little squares. I put it in here and then I just cover it and I stir it. I've probably been over here stirring it every once in a while for about the past probably 40 minutes already. Yeah, it is quarter to six already, so yeah, at least the last 45 minutes. I just keep stirring until that gets all melty. I found a package of dinner rolls in the freezer, so I just, from frozen, I just pop them into the oven. And now they're nice and hot and soft. And then over here, I... <laughs> Amongst all of the Christmas decorations I still need to put away, <laughs> I have the cheese and the bacon bits and the green onions. And so that's what we're... So over here, then I have the cheese and the bacon bits and the green onions, and that's what we'll be top... <laughs> so over here, I have the cheese and the bacon bits and the green onions, and that's what we will be topping our soup with tonight. Okay, we're back in the kitchen here, and tonight what we're gonna be having is garlic butter chicken, and I'm actually gonna be using chicken legs. Along with the garlic butter chicken, I'll be making some just frozen vegetables out of a bag, and then I'm also going to make some of those like seasoned instant mashed potatoes. So it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be easy. You can hear lots of noise. The kids are in the basement playing pool or something like that, and so it's pretty noisy right now. So here's kind of the setup. I'm preheating my oven to 400 degrees. I have my cast iron pan. This is a really big cast iron. I have it getting very, very hot. I have it set at like six and a half or seven, which is very, very hot on my stove. I've just rinsed all my chicken. One pointer I would have when you do something like this, just make sure you have all similar pieces. So either all chicken thighs, which is delicious. They just didn't have thighs. I had to get legs. Um, legs is going to be just just as delicious but whatever you do choose all similar size pieces of meat okay so what i'm going to do now is just pat dry my chicken i want it fairly dry and then i'm going to get it seasoned up with salt and pepper onion powder garlic powder and a little bit of spring a little sprinkle of paprika place all of my chicken uh, just about as skin side down as I can as I can do here. It's kind of funny with legs because it just is. <laughs> All right, amazingly, all of the chicken fit in here. I'm just going to cook this, I'm really just searing it on the one side until, you know, it's seared really, really nice and golden brown. Okay, I flipped on my chicken. It got really brown really, really fast. Then I did turn the heat down 
and now I put in a whole stick of butter. I know that sounds like a lot, but this is a lot of chicken. If you have a smaller cast iron pan, maybe a 10 inch, and you're only using maybe six pieces of chicken, just go with a half a stick of butter, that will be plenty. But for this amount of chicken, I, I needed a whole stick because I really want a lot of kind of sauciness here. I'm actually gonna turn the heat, um, and I'm gonna keep it turned down because I just wanted to also show you the amount of minced garlic I used here. So this is almost two tablespoons of minced garlic, and I'm just gonna kind of push that down into the butter and let that just kind of get fragrant. And basically as soon as it's fragrant, which I'm already smelling that garlic, it's getting nice and hot, I'm going to put this into the oven. My oven just preheated to 400 degrees. This literally took me I mean, I did have to get out my ingredients. I have kind of a mess here to clean up. Um, but literally, it took me five minutes to get out the ingredients, to rinse the chicken and pat it dry. So now I'm just gonna put this into my 400 degree preheated oven. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes. I'll be back after 30 minutes to check on the chicken. I don't know if this is going to be done yet at 30 minutes. It may take upwards of 45. Um, it just, it always kind of depends on like how tightly packed the chicken is, the sizes of the chicken, things like that. So I like to just start it low or you know with a small amount of time I can come back, check it, and then I can always cook it for longer. But once it's overcooked, it's overcooked. So at 35 minutes this chicken is registering a little bit over 180 degrees so it is very very done. And now what I like to do is just kind of scoop up some of the butter sauce it probably works better if I tip this to one side and then, yeah, because it's kind of hard to do it because there's not a whole lot. A lot of it gets kind of soaked up by the chicken. But I'm going to tip this and let all of the butter, garlic butter sauce come down to one end and then I will scoop it and I'm going to drizzle it over. If you have fresh pars parsley, that always works really nice. I just have some dried and so after I get the garlic butter over that, I'm going to sprinkle some parsley on. And then... I'm just waiting for my waters to come to a boil here. I have some water here and some water here. This one is going to be for this little pouch of um, instant mashed potatoes. I know it doesn't look like much for a family of six, but I a lot of my kids really just don't really like mashed potatoes. <laughs> I know it seems weird because it seems like such a kid-friendly thing, but that's just how it is. Okay, and then the front one is for this broccoli stir fry mix. So I'm just going to uh, bring this to a boil and just follow the directions right on the back. And you're probably wondering, it says you can just microwave it in here, but guess what? The microwave broke about a week ago, right in the middle of me being sick. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in one of the videos, but I did end up having, you know, the sickness. <laughs> And I mean, I'm totally fine. I would say actually today is finally the first day. I don't have a headache. I can't believe it. I'm just thinking about it. I don't have a headache and we just have not replaced it yet. So we're doing a lot of stuff on the stove and I'm getting really, really good at warming things up and figuring out how to do it without a microwave. Serve up some mashed potatoes. Mm. Scoop it up. Nice. Do you want help with a piece of chicken? Hey, Dad, do you want a dinner roll? Get a piece of chicken or two two chickens or start with one? Two. I don't want a dinner roll. Joe, dinner roll? No. Okay. How about some vegetables? No vegetables today. <laughs> None today, huh? How about a carrot? Not today. It's Friday night now, and this is what supper is looking like. So we just have the leftover uh, macaroni and cheese from lunch, and then I cut up some more vegetables, and we're just having some quick uh, fish fillets. So that's it. Oh, Warren wants to show his plate too, because we also had some leftover instant mashed potatoes. And that is going to be supper here on this Friday night. I thank you guys for coming along with me this week. And I hope that I've inspired you to um, just make some good and simple meals for your family. I will put a couple other videos up here if you want to check out some other meals of the week if you'd like. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.